Hi everyone, so today we have this question involving recurrence relations. Now the thing about recurrence relations is that they keep coming up a lot, but whenever they come, they are actually usually pretty easy, especially in National Math Olympiads. You usually can form some sort of maybe relation and then it can be easily solved. Similar is the case with this problem and yeah, maybe let's just see how this works. Okay, so this is problem number 5 from the Australian Math Olympiad in 2018. And in this video, we're going to be looking at recurrence relations then forming a one-step recursion for AN. After that, we have some book sessions in National Math Olympiads and at the end, a similar but challenging problem. This video is sponsored by Chinta.com. Since 2010, Chinta has trained thousands of students from all around the world in mathematical olympiads, physics olympiads, computer science and informatics olympiads, ISI CMI entrances, and research projects for school and college students. Okay, so what does it say? So we have defined this kind of like recursion, right? So define an from n is equal to 1 to infinity by a1 is equal to 1, and then we have this a, the, this definition of an, right? So an is equal to n times a1 plus a2 all the way up to an minus 1. And we need to prove that 2018 square in fact divides a sub 2018. And over here, what we kind of intend to do when we see something like this, so let me see something of like this form. Maybe instead of that, maybe we just need to write an as a one step recursion. So, what that means is writing an in the form of maybe an minus one, right? And if you kind of like figure that out, how you can write that, that actually works. Or you can uh, or you can also write it like this an plus one in the form of an and once you get into that form things become a lot easier right so let's just see how we can maybe like reduce this uh, recursion but okay before we maybe like move on to that i want to make a claim so my claim is actually related more about number theory than algebra so if let's say the gcd of b comma n is one then and actually n divides a b then that essentially implies that n divides a but what does this mean so n divides a b right so a b is equal let's say n times k now now it says that the gcd of b comma n is one so b comma n is one right so obviously n has to divide a right these two quantities n and b don't divide each other Right, the GCD is one. That's the greatest common divisor. So therefore, n has to divide a, and this is actually pretty trivial. And you can actually prove that by something called as Bayes-Oud's lemma. So the proof involves the Bayes-Oud's lemma, right, which states that there exists integers x and y. There exists integer x over y, which belongs to obviously integers such that bx plus ny is equal to 1 and how can we maybe like relate this in the claim that we stated so we've said that n divides a b right so which implies that a b is equal to n times z for some z belonging to integers right z belong to the set of integers obviously now here you have bx plus ny is equal to 1 maybe just uh, maybe just multiply the left hand side both hand side by a so you get abx plus a and y is equal to a and since a b is equal to n z just replace that you get n z x plus a and y is equal to a and then obviously maybe you take n common you will get x c plus a y is equal to a and from here it is pretty clear that n divides a so therefore this claim is proven right if uh, the claim was that if the gcd of b comma n is one and n divides a b then n divides a Okay, that's great and I kind of proved that because we are going to need that in uh, somewhere down the line, right? So we have there given us this recursion that an is equal to n times a1 plus a2 all the way up to an. Okay, great. So how can I maybe write a n plus 1? What would that be? Just replace every n with n plus 1. That essentially becomes n plus 1 times a1 plus a2 all the way up to an. Actually, just a correction here we had n minus 1. Okay, great. So when you replace n minus 1 by uh, n plus 1, replace n by n plus 1, you get a n. Okay, great. Now let me just label this as equation number 1 and equation number 2. Now, if you actually see that equation number 1 and 2 are actually quite similar, you have a lot of common terms over here. Right? 
in this second bracket there are actually a lot of common terms so what i can maybe do is i can multiply equation 1 by n plus 1 and i can multiply equation 2 by n so that gives me like another two set of equations so that gives me um that basically gives me n plus 1 times a n n plus 1 times a n is equal to n times n plus 1 times this entire block of things right a1 plus a2 all the way up till a sub n minus 1 let me just label that as equation number 3 and once I maybe multiply equation number 2 by n I'll get n times a n plus 1 right is equal to n times n plus 1 times all of these things a1 plus a2 all the way up till a n and let me just label that as equation number 4 now after this point becomes pretty clear what to do so it is nothing but I need to subtract equation uh, 3 from equation number 4. So I just subtract equation 3 from equation number 4, equation 4 minus equation 3 and a lot of these terms gets cancelled out on the right hand side. So what I actually get, I'll get n times a n plus 1, right, minus n plus 1 times a n and on the right hand side basically everything gets cancelled except for the last term which is n times n plus 1 times a n and I can actually check this out that it works. And after that, it's actually pretty easy. So n times a n plus 1 is equal to n times n plus 1 times a n plus n plus 1 times a n. I just took this negative quantity to the other side. And let me just factorize the right hand side. I can take n plus 1 times a n common. So what will I get? I'll just get n plus 1, right? So that means that n times a n plus 1 is equal to a n times n plus 1 whole squared. And now, now. The GCD of n comma n plus 1 is actually 1, right? So obviously the GCD of n and n plus 1 whole square also be 1. Okay, great. So that means that these both quantities don't divide one another. So that essentially means that n plus 1 whole square needs to divide a sub n plus 1, right? Because essentially that was a claim that we had made, right? Let me just remind you of the claim. The claim was if GCD of b comma n is 1 and n is dividing a b, then that essentially implies that n has to divide a right so same over here the gcd of n and n plus 1 is 1 they don't divide one another so therefore this n plus 1 whole square has to divide a sub n plus 1 right so n plus 1 whole square needs to divide a sub n plus 1 and after this thing we need to do nothing but maybe just put n is equal to 2017 so we get 2018 whole square divides a sub 2018 which is what we had to prove and we have proven that so this was quite an interesting problem the only kind of like challenge was to write a one-step recursion for it and in a lot of these recursion relations problems that's essentially what you have to do maybe just write a n in terms of a n minus one and then things become a lot easier that in which direction you need to proceed right so like here it become pretty trivial that we just need to multiply both equations and kind of like subtract them kind of like the method of solving simultaneous equations in certain cases, you will have to maybe form a characteristic polynomial, but the things become quite clear when you write a one-step recursion. Okay, so moving on, we have some book sessions for National Math Olympiads, Elementary Number 3 by David Burton, Problem Solving Strategies by Arthur Angel, Functional Equations by Venkatachala, Problems in Plane Geometry by Sharikin, and Elementary Number Theory by Siapinski. Okay, so at the end, we have a similar but challenging problem, and I wanted to solve the following recurrence relation. So a sub n plus 2 minus 2a sub n plus 1 plus a n is equal to 2 raised to the power n. And the initial conditions are given, right? a naught is given, a1 is given. So if we try this out, and if you're able to make any progress on it, or if you're able to solve it, let me in the comment section. And until then, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much, and bye-bye. Tinta programs are designed for students who are passionate about mathematics. And they are personalized with one-on-one -on -one training, individual evaluation, and remedial sessions. The reason Chinta students are successful over the last 10 years because they are taught by mathematicians and real Olympiads from leading universities in India, United States and Europe. Some of our students come back to teach at Chinta from Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, MIT, UCLA, ISI, CMI, IITs, TIFR and IISC. For more information, visit chinta.com.